All right, welcome back to Ayong Taigi. I am Ayong, and this is Taigi Phonics Part 9. So I recently learned a brand new way of thinking about the tones in Taigi, and that's even after like quite a few years of uh, studying and learning. So, you know, there's always plenty more to learn. And I wanted to make this video because I personally have found that this is sort of a much simpler and clearer way to, to actually get in there and like understand uh, how the tones and the tone changes specifically work sort of like under the hood. And I had not heard this, um, this way of describing the tones before. So I know that it doesn't show up uh, at least in like most uh, textbooks and, and that sort of thing. Now, all of the content in the previous uh, videos that I've done on tones, that all still stands. So if you are already comfortable with that, you won't necessarily learn anything new per se in this video, but uh, hopefully it's still worth a few minutes of your time to watch and to get a clearer picture of sort of what's going on with all these funky tone rules. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get rid of the concept of tone changes altogether. Throw it out, gone. And we're gonna introduce a new concept which is called stereotonicity. Now, as soon as I heard this word, everything was like, just clicked into place and it made perfect sense. But if you are still new to Taigi, it probably needs some explanation. So what does stereotonicity actually mean? Well, basically, it's just another way to think about the tones. So this time, instead of uh, saying that each tone has one pitch, so like a one-to-one, -one, and the tones are like morphing and changing into one another, that's what we call tone sandy or tone changes, we're gonna say that every tone in Taiwanese has two different pitches. So the tones themselves are actually in stereo. They're like dual track, right? Left and right, just like stereo audio. In this case, it's stereo tonic. So for Taigi, the left track is gonna be called the running tone and the right track is gonna be called the standing tone. Let's take a look at tone number one. So you may have seen these before. This is basically just a, a pitch diagram and this is like a music staff. So these are our pitches like do, re, mi, fa, so. And you can see where each uh, tone is on the staff, what pitch it has. And these are both flat tones and you can see that also they're both flat. So over here we have the, uh, on the left we have the running tone and it sounds like this, do, re, mi, mi. So this will be o. And then on the right we have the standing tone and it sounds like this, do, re, mi, fa, so, so. Oh, so when we put them together, oh, oh. But what do running and standing actually mean? So uh, running, in this case, it basically just means like talking, like you're still talking. You're in the middle of a, a phrase or a noun. We learned some of those rules before. And there's like more to come before you're finished. So in that case, you're going to use the running tone for tone number one, which is again is Oh, and then standing, that's when you pause, right? Even if it's just like a, a brief sort of almost unnoticeable pause at the end of a clause or a phrase or whatever. Uh, but conceptually, you sort of like pause just for, just for that moment. And that last sound just before the pause, that gets the standing tone. So it's going to be this high flat one here. Oh, and that is it. So we don't need any tone change rules. We don't need any fancy arrow diagrams. This one changes to that one and all that stuff. None of that. Forget it. So we can just think about tone one in stereo with the running tone and the standing tone. And when we write the word black like this, now we can see it just makes perfect sense, right? They're both tone one and the first one, we're not finished talking yet. So it's going to be the running tone. Oh, and the next one, we're done talking and we're going to stop. Oh, so we have oh, oh. So that's it. You can actually go through all of the tones with this new way of looking at them using stereo tonicity. And I hope that will help you get a better feel for how the tones actually work in practice. Now, I'm not going to go through all of the tones again in detail. 
but let's do one more. And so here is tone number two. And again, we can see the uh, pitch contours for tone number two. We've got uh, the running tone over here being, is going to be huh. And then the standing tone over here is going to be huh. So it starts out up high and it drops down huh. So one of the reasons I really like this way of thinking about it are these little tone marks on top of the vowels. Because when you get comfortable in tagi, you might realize that like, wait a second, tone two is high and flat, something like, I don't know, eight or nine out of 10 times. And you kind of begin to associate that this high flat tone with this, uh, you know, tone two tone mark. But when we, when we learn the tones in the usual way, then we learn that tone number two is, uh, you know, is this one over here, it's the falling tone, and then it has to change to number one, and that one is flat. And for me, that takes a lot of extra brain power, and it's kind of confusing because, you know, tone one doesn't really have any mark on it, but here we do have the tone mark, and we have the same high and flat pitch for one that should be falling and blah, right? So <laughs> let's, just, let's just scratch all of that, and then the tone mark, actually makes perfect sense, right? Because we can see we're not at the end of the phrase yet, so it's definitely gonna be the running tone. And the number two uh, running tone is high and flat. Huh. And then the standing tone, and that's the one where we're gonna do the falling. Huh. And we put it together. Huh, huh. Now, I don't know about you, but for me at least, I personally think that makes things a lot easier to understand. So conceptually, that's pretty much it. That is stereotonicity. This is a stereo tone. And now we can think about having two pitches per tone instead of tones that morph and change into one another. Now, I don't think we really need to go over all of the other tones again in a lot of detail, but um, I have the chart, so let's just read through the words once uh, just for, for you guys to practice. And don't forget to check the description. I'll put a link in to download uh, these charts and stuff so you can print them out, stick them on your wall, whatever you like. Uh, and you can always go back, of course, to my previous videos on tones for some more practice now that you know this uh, new way of how to think about them in stereo. All right, so here is tone number three. And again, uh, in stereo, so now we have tie tie. And for me, that looks much cleaner. Tie, tie. And here we have tone four. And remember tone four and eight, they're divided into the PTK and the H. So here's our PTK, here's our H. So PTK, we've got shep, shep. And with the H, we've got pu, pu. Tone five, and the, again, these are all the same. We've actually done all these in a previous tone video, but now we're just seeing the pitches together uh, in this running and standing pattern to make it a little bit more clear. So here's another one, tone five. Dum, 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 dum. And tone seven. And here we've got ban, 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 ban. And then tone eight again with the PTK and H separated. So we've got did, did, but, but. All right, so that's it. Yeah, we've covered uh, all the tones uh, one through eight. Again, there's no six, so we're done. Mm, sorry. So one last thing, because uh, there is always an exception to make the rule. Uh, in Dagi, there is one tone that is not stereotonic and I actually don't think that I have covered this tone in any previous video, so there is something new in this video after all. Uh, and that is going to be the ninth tone. So the ninth tone is always rising. It does not have a separate running and standing tones. It's a mid to rising tone. And we write it with this uh, little symbol down here, which is called a brev accent. It's, uh, it's round at the bottom. It's not pointy. Uh, the pointy one is called a caron. This one's called a brev. And you'll find this tone in a lot of words that are uh, contractions, like uh, like zang, which is a contraction of za hung, and it means yesterday, uh, or in Japanese loan words, like uh, enjin, which means engine, or kangbang, which means like a signboard. So uh, that's it for tone nine. I hope that that helps you uh, understand the tones and the tone changes or 
rather uh, the stereotonic tones a little bit better and that you'll be able to use this new way of thinking about it to improve your daigi. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to head down there, uh, subscribe, like, share, uh, drop me some feedback, leave me a comment, let me know what you think. That's it for now. Xiang ane, zaihui.